I wrecked my drone. That's why I'm out here. Uh, <laughs> she said yeet into the Milo field. So we're walking back to the tractor. I couldn't walk in here because it's not cut yet. So thank goodness for GPS locations and lots of noises and whirring sounds. Because if not, this thing would get monched by a combine. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to Ag with Emma. Today's video, for context, right now I'm recording this intro on January something, and we're gonna jump back in time a little bit. I've posted a couple videos in between uh, Custom Harvest and right now, because I still have Harvest content, but I had some more videos that were of a bigger, bigger priority. So we're gonna jump back to when we were cutting Milo at our second to last stop, and then the moving day for our last technical move day before our moving south day to the shop. So this is the tail end of Custom Harvest. We're cutting Milo, we're moving. Everything is crazy because we were only cutting a couple hours away from our last stop. So that's why uh, this moving day that I captured was so chaotic and plans change so much. But I think it's good to see because you really understand how much plans change and how many things can, you know, go not according to plan and what we had to do to kind of suffice with only five people moving as much as we had to move since it was the end of the run so hope you guys enjoy and i'll catch you at the end a little search and rescue mission i'm very itchy <laughs> milo is a really itchy crop so the milo we're cutting with a combine is a grain but it can also be silage um, there's different varieties of milo it's also called sorghum or grain sorghum and the dust is so itchy because it actually under a telescope has barbs on it. So I've never seen that for myself and I'd love to see it someday, but that's just what I've been told. And this Milo is being cut for livestock feed. You see the rows are going this way. We cut Milo this way and it does, you do do that with some other crops that you cut with a draper as well. Um, we just didn't cut a lot of wheat at an angle this year, but we're cutting it at an angle so that it doesn't wear out those sickle bars in the same spots. Because if we cut it with the rows, every single one of these rows, there would be a worn spot in that sickle bar from going back and forth and back and forth and using the same sickles the whole time. So that's why we cut it at an angle instead of straight on with it. And if we had the converted corn head to cut this, then we just go straight with it, but we don't. So. We're using a draper header and cutting it at an angle. And then we're also cutting terraces. So terraces help with water drainage in the field and it basically creates a bunch of bumps and hills and obstacles for when you're cutting. So I'm gonna to explain to you what's going on. So you're gonna see the combine here when they go over this hill. We're gonna go down and then up and over that hill. The header's gonna come off a little bit and then back down. That's a terrace. And there is a lot of them in this field. Um, all these squiggly lines under the blue is terraces. Those are all terraces. Not good. There's another example just from my tractor cab. You can see this grass right here and then this dirt soil is elevated. It's like a slope. So it's just kind of a better example. I don't know if you guys can see the lines out there. Those are all elevation. Here we go. Here's what Milo looks like. The seeds anyway. So it's smaller than wheat, smaller than corn, not smaller than mustard, but I've never cut mustard. So pretty cool stuff to look at. Road mode. So we just got done with the second to last field. We are on our way to our last field for this stop. And then after we're done here, well, today is the 22nd of October and we're supposed to get some uh, pretty strong winds tomorrow. So we're trying to get it all done today, but there's still about, ah, ah, ah it's bumpy. <laughs> there's still a couple hundred acres left here, but it's only one field and it's pretty flat. So hopefully we'll get through it before the wind comes tomorrow because if anybody knows Kansas they know that it gets windy very fast <laughs> but it's pretty out here I'll show you guys you're welcome welcome to Kansas everybody also something cool to see 
the green in that field, you can't really see it that good on camera, uh, right there. That is winter wheat coming up, so they plant winter wheat here, and that is what will come down here and harvest, well, or whoever harvests down here will come up and harvest it in June or July, all depending on the weather and all sorts of crazy stuff, so that is an old wheat field. That is also an old wheat field, and they both got cut with draper headers, you can tell because they're so short. And they use a lot of stripper headers here, and I talked about those a couple of videos ago. That was a while ago, but, um, yeah. That's just another cool part of agriculture to see while you're, you know, while you're harvesting this year's crop, next year's crop is being planted depending on what it is. So we're finishing 80 acres today. Shanna didn't bring her lunchbox, but she whips these out of her pocket and says, I'm prepared for a sugar crash. All the cows are curious. They're all moving over there. Move, <laughs> move. <laughs> it's whipping now. We beat it though. We're all done. See, all that blue, complete. So we have 7,000 acres to go yet. And then we'll be done. So it's, it's been a haul. Brown back there. Got the classic tumbleweed scene. Mm. Rolling out. Holy crap! Ah! Oh, I lost my door. What do you think about this? I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that that stop sign is supposed to be facing up. Uh, welcome to Kansas where the wind blows the stop signs upside down. It is the 24th of October. We are working on moving to our next and last stop. We are roading the grain cart, roading one combine, um, loading one combine, and then we have a lot more moving pieces to move, load, haul up, everything like that. <sighs> I think we have four header trailers, another trailer, a fuel trailer, three campers, five people, two personal vehicles, uh, three personal vehicles actually, plus the Dodge and a work pickup. And there's a lot for only five people. So I don't know how long it's gonna take, but I'm gonna bring you guys along for the process of an irregular moving day because normally everything would get loaded up like combines, grain cart would all be loaded on trailers. Those would get pulled with semis. But we only have two people with CDLs, so we figured we just rode the grain cart and the combine. And it's only a hundred something miles, so. And then we'll be done. And then we'll load up there, and then we'll take it all back to Texas. That's expensive. That's expensive. Yeesh. Now we are fueling. I'm gonna fuel up my grain cart tractor, the combines, and put def in them as well. I already put def in the grain cart. And then I have to air up the tires on the parts trailer. So that is what is going on for the moment. Things going on are the trailer getting hooked up to the dolly so that we can hook it up to the other trailer. And then sleepers are getting cleaned out. We're probably gonna have to blow those toolboxes out on the Dodge because they're dirty. And then we have to do something with the headers. I forgot what that was though. So the grain cart is fueled next. We are going to air up the tires on the cargo trailer. And then we're gonna fuel the combine. So I'll give her a good old crank. I ran away, so we're gonna put it in our pocket. Those are at 30, they're supposed to be at 70, just for context. Getting closer. So we did have to fuel up all of the equipment. We like to fuel up the equipment on every move day regardless because it helps take some of the load off of that fuel trailer so that we're not pulling a full tank of fuel everywhere. Uh, especially on longer move days when we're pulling it with the Suburban. 
So um, I fueled everything up. I really like fueling machines. It's one of my favorite things to do. And up the stairs. exhaust fluid in there as well we just you know make sure everything's good to go so that once we get to our next stop that we can just roll and we're ready for it and up again <laughs> I'm gonna go change a hitch out. That's my favorite thing to do. <laughs> uh, I need a 15 16 wrench. One of these bad boys. We're gonna switch the hitch on the flex draper header so that we can hook it up to, my hair is everywhere, the combine. So this is the hitch I need to change out and it just changes with two little bolts and then we're gonna put that one in and it'll be able to hook onto the combine trailer. And I wasn't gonna leave this clip in, but it just shows you how windy it was. Like the dirt was blowing everywhere, my gloves were flying everywhere, my hair was everywhere, and the audio, you guys have heard it. it the Kansas wind does not mess around. onto the road because that's that's never a good day. OSHA approved safety. <laughs> I'm gonna get walked by this thing. It was actually so windy yesterday that it blew the header into that little entry road right there. Um, so I had to put a you know a little block behind the tires but never had that happen before. So we're gonna go hook up that header to the back of this combine trailer and then we'll have a couple other things to do. <sighs> It's a lot. So Slim's up there. Mike's gonna sit over there. And I tell Slim what way to go. Alright. Lights are hooked up. Chains are hooked up. We also put a bungee behind the chest. That is an oversized load. So we have this. Perfect. But that's all done. Mike's gonna bring his pickup over here, hook up to that. We're gonna move this header trailer out. We're gonna get the combine, hook it up to the corn head. And then we have to put concaves in this trailer. The concaves are sitting over there somewhere. So that is, I think, the last job outside. And then we've got those hooked up, ready to go. I think we should be set. On that drop deck, we're going to put my car and Mike's pickup, I believe, to eliminate some trips. Um, so very unusual move day. We don't ever do this this week. so much harder to do one-handed. I hope you guys know that. We're just gonna put that on the ground for now. <laughs> Good. There's another set of concaves under there. One more. Now we're gonna put the header back on the trailer. Can't forget the strap though. If y'all need to know how to properly fold up a ratchet strap. Slim really wanted to show you guys how to put your ratchet straps upright. There you go. Bada bing bada boom. This is the combine we're loading. I'll give you uh, two seconds to figure out why we're doing that instead of loading it. It's because of those duels right there. It's just gonna save us time to not have to take those off, put them back on, because that's all process. That's why we loaded that one with the single tires, so we didn't have to take the duels off to load that one too. There goes boss man. Boss lady's coming. Oh, that's the dual carrier on the front end of our combine, so we put the duels in that. Oh, they don't wave. They're gonna have a long drive. Okay, so complete change of plans. Um, boss man, boss lady are headed with the green cart and the combine with the duels on it, they're going down. We are taking a pickup. We're taking Boss Man's pickup. We're gonna leave that pickup down there for them. 
And then uh, we're also taking the Dodge and the Hoppers down there. So they're headed down combine tractor, we're headed down two pickups and a semi and the Hoppers. And then we'll leave a pickup down there, we'll take the Dodge back, and then in the morning we're going to take the campers, and then the headers. And then we're coming back after that <laughs> to grab my car and Mike's truck, so hopefully I'll go smoothly. Okay, we're on day two of moving. Slim is about to go start his truck. We're gonna take, me and Slim are going with the uh, semi with the combine and the header on it and I'll be pulling the other header that's over there that we put the, uh, we didn't put the other hitch on. We're gonna hook that up to the pickup. And then boss man, boss lady and Mike are going to bring the step deck with two vehicles on it. Hopefully they're gonna load Mike's pickup and the Suburban onto that. And then they're gonna take the two campers down as well. And then me and Slim are gonna come back and get the other camper and my car. Because my car can't go on the step deck because it's too low to the ground and it would bottom out. And we don't want that to happen because my car is expensive and I don't need to buy another one. So that is what the plan is for today. You're never gonna believe this, but plans just changed again. So we're taking our camper, the crew camper down with us, with me and Slim. And then um, boss man, boss lady, he'll take the step deck. This ain't coming out of the, oh, but she ain't coming out. It's all unscrewed already. I don't know what this thing's problem is. Gosh, almighty. So we take the electric, unplug it. Mike already got the sewer. Um, gotta get the hose out of the way. We're just gonna put this in the back seat of the Dodge. It's all frozen because it was cold last night. We didn't have any water. Ooh, I think that's still connected. And then we're gonna put these jacks up, hook it up up there. Are you stuck in your pickup? You're stuck in your pickup, huh? Oh, shit. All right, that was a little bit of a change of plans. We're good to go. We got a camper, header. I'm hauling the header, not the camper. Slim's taking the semi because he has a CDL. Um, yeah, so after this one, we have the step deck, which boss man's taking, and two campers and two personal vehicles. And then we'll be all moved south. We're back. I'm waiting to put the camper jacks up and now this is our last load and we'll be fully moved out of here again very unusual move day but it's done almost all right that is all i have for you guys today thank you so much for watching remember if you enjoyed this video to subscribe i'll have i think one more harvest video and then i have um, I'm cleaning out my phone storage because I record all of this on my phone and my phone storage fills up so fast So I'm cleaning out everything from 2022 I'm gonna make an end-of-year recap video another irrigation video and then a harvest video And those will all be posted so that I can continue to do farm tours and go meet lots of people with my phone capacity camera storage situation so be look on be on the lookout for that and again. Thank you for watching remember to subscribe um, and as always, hasta la pasta.